Starship Design, you've arrived. Welcome to Stroud Eklund. a satisfying moment to return to your ship. Good day, Captain. Welcome to Stroud Eklund. Walter is quite proud of what his company has accomplished, and for good reason. I came out of curiosity, but... Some of these specs. Impressive. These ships are nice, but compared to a Trident? A technology huh. that doesn't even exist, Frank. I'm good at what I do, but you're mental if you think I can pull off what you're asking. Tried and true is what we should focus on. Tried and true is so dull, though. I like Frank's design, but maybe we could pivot to do more of a research vessel? Something suited for deep space exploration. That's a great suggestion, but you know what? We haven't heard from Nev yet. Maybe she has some marketing insights. Okay, um, but... Uh, what if... Uh, sorry, he hear me out. <clears throat> what if we went for the family recreation demo instead? It's a much bigger market than Explorers, and no one else is doing it. Oh, for... Seriously? Can we really That's a, a little different than I think there we were all expecting, but a really good point. This keeps oh, up. this all must be Walter's consultant friend. Please, flying. come join us. We've been waiting for you. Hi there. We got a business to Hello. No time for sentiment. Well... I do like the ships we're looking at. It might surprise you to hear that no, I have not. This is actually the first project I've led for Stroud Eklund. I recently graduated with a master's degree in engineering management. I'm actually kind of surprised they hired me, but I was at the top of my class, so maybe they didn't want to lose me to some other star yard. Anyway, I'm grateful for the chance to do good work here. It means I'm responsible for making sure our projects are carried through to completion. I'm not the one calling all the shots, per se, but I do need to ensure the people making those calls are empowered to do that within the limits the executive set for us. You must be Walter's colleague. He informed me that you'd be taking charge of Project Kepler despite the fact that we have a fully dedicated R&D staff already assigned to it. But that's okay. I'm sure that even though you have virtually no experience with this, you'll do a great job. Oh, uh, I just assumed. You know what? I'm really sorry. I should trust Walter knew what he was doing. My bad. Even so, we have plenty of designers. As you probably know, we're tasked with coming up with Strout Eklund's next hit starship. But we have budget concerns, market research to finish, and we can't seem to agree on a design. So I guess Walter sent you to resolve these issues. Have at it. Sure, I'm Jules, R&D project lead. I am, was, the one making all the big decisions. I suppose I just coordinate now. You already heard from Frank, he's lead designer on the project, focused on the look and feel of the ships. There's Ella, another senior designer. She focuses on some of the more technical designs of ships. Went to school with Frank. 
Mike is our senior engineer responsible for consulting on all the technical bits, the machinery, the computer systems, etc. And then there's Nev. She's here for marketing. It's her job to weigh in and sell this thing to consumers. There are a lot of factors to consider. Who is our market and what do they want in a ship? Which components are we putting into it? How fast should it go? How much cargo capacity should it have? What color should it be? We need to decide every little detail. Ah, right, so you mentioned. Let's move on to solving our budget issues then, shall we? We were charged with building the newest, hottest ship on the market, which won't be possible unless we petition the board for more money. So we have two new budget proposals. One will allow us to build what I consider to be a very sensible ship, but we'll have to make some tough design cuts. The other will allow us much more flexibility to put whatever we want into the ship. It's what I call the kitchen sink proposal. I don't love it, but it'll be next to impossible to approve. What should we go with? While it's true we'd be able to afford to put anything and everything into that design, it's just not practical, and the board will put more pressure on us to see that it succeeds. I worry that without constraints, my team will be disincentivized to focus this ship in any given direction, and they'll try to cram in everything but the kitchen sink, hence the name. Who knows what kind of monstrosity we'd create if we tried to incorporate all of our designs? And would something that expensive actually sell? I was afraid you'd say that. Look, I'm the one who has to go to the board with this proposal, so before I can convince them this is going to be worth it, you're going to need to convince me. Well, I'm all ears because it's going to take a miracle to convince them. Well, there's always room for personal improvement, I suppose. I hadn't considered it that way. It gives us some wiggle room if we need to try some things, and if we come in way under budget, it'll look good. A smart leader knows when some ideas just aren't worth pursuing. Look, I know you're confident with this budget, but I know there's no way I can get it past the board, so if you want it, you're going to need to figure out how to get it done yourself. All right. I don't know how you're going to do it unless you somehow have the authority to approve the kitchen sink budget in the computer. You're asking for technology that doesn't even exist, Frank. I'm good at what I do, but you're mental if you think I can pull off what you're asking. Tried and true is what we should focus on. Oh, this must be Walter's consultant friend. Please, come join us. We've been waiting for you. Hi there. I was just thinking about you. Hello. You must be Walter's colleague. He informed me that you'd be taking charge of Project Kepler despite the fact that we have a fully dedicated R&D staff already assigned to it. But that's okay. I'm sure that even though you have virtually no experience with this, you'll do a great job. Oh, ah, uh, I just assumed. You know what? I'm really sorry. I should trust Walter knew what he was doing. My bad. Even so, we have plenty of designers. As you probably know, we're tasked with coming up with Strout Eklund's next hit starship. But we have budget concerns, market research to finish, and we can't seem to agree on a design. So I guess Walter sent you to resolve these issues. Have at it. Ah, right, so you mentioned. Let's move on to solving our budget issues then, shall we? We were charged with building the newest, hottest ship on the market, which won't be possible unless we petition the board for more money. So we have two new budget proposals. One will allow us to build what I consider to be a very sensible ship, but we'll have to make some tough design cuts. The other will allow us much more flexibility to put whatever we want into the ship. It's what I call the kitchen sink proposal. 
I don't love it, but it'll be next to impossible to approve. What should we go with? I was afraid you'd say that. Look, I'm the one who has to go to the board with his proposals. Well, I'm all ears, because it's going to take a miracle to con- I mean, you're not wrong. We've got to ask them for more money anyway. Might as well go big. Maybe so. Okay, I think you made some good points. I'll go to the board with the kitchen sink proposal and get that approved. Well, Jules, it seems you have your work cut out for you. Great! That's one problem solved. I'll go forward with that budget proposal and we can move on. Next, we need to gather some market data. The best way to do this is to outfit your ship with some sensors and take it through some real-world scenarios so we can make more informed design decisions. Pick up a mission or two at the mission board and proceed like you normally would. We'll collect the data when you return. If you take on a variety of missions, we can build a ship to handle a variety of scenarios. But if you just fly one mission, we can build a more focused ship. It's up to you. In the meantime, you might also want to talk with the team, get to know them, give feedback on their proposals, etc. Good luck out there. So, you're Walter's friend. I know he chose you to head this project as some sort of favor. Honestly, as senior technical designer, I was hoping to receive that honor, but um, uh, there's always next time. Regardless, I'm excited to help you out. Do you have any experience building spaceships? Have you seen the specs on the? This is wonderful to hear. I hope for all of our sakes that you are not overselling your ability. Now, I know you've been asked to give feedback on our design proposals. Would you care for a brief synopsis of mine? Of course. But first, let me ask you this. What pilot demographic is currently being underserved by the current Starship market? not fun. My idea is a little less conventional. I believe we should invest in making a dedicated exploration ship marketed towards citizen scientists. Sure, we and other manufacturers have lines of exploration ships, but none built with the average consumer in mind. It's my hope that we can jumpstart a new era of affordable, accessible space exploration fueled by ordinary people like you and me. Thanks. Let me tell you, we would not regret going with my idea. This is a chance to do something that will truly inspire future generations. Why do I feel like answering this could be a trap coming from someone who was sent here by Walter to step in and take over our project? Ah, it's not like I have anything to hide. I used to think working for a super wealthy corporation would be terrible, but honestly, it's pretty great. They've been good to me, and the stability is way better than any startup. I've had opportunities I wouldn't have anywhere else, so yeah, pretty great. Well, as a senior designer, I'm trusted to work on some pretty important features on these ships. Most of my work is on the technical features, designing them to be more user-friendly. Computer systems like navigation, targeting, you name it. It may not be as glamorous as what Frank does, but without me, these ships would be almost impossible for the average consumer to actually use. Okay, yeah. Bye. I'm wondering if we need another chef in the kitchen. Then again, I hear Walter brought you in to finally make a decision around here. That 
Uh, well, how do I put this? My co-workers are, are smart people. But between you and me, they're in way over their head with this project. Uh, Jules especially. She's new at being a project lead and has insisted we design by committee so everyone's voice is heard. Admirable, but no one could agree on anything and we're running significantly behind because of it. Good. Just so long as you don't push us to make anything too nutty, I think your decisiveness will put us back on the right track. Speaking of which, I think my plan will get us where we need to be as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's simple, no frills, and most importantly, won't cause me any major headaches on the engineering side. It's truth, and we need it. The others believe we need to think big and innovate. Reality is, we just need to do what we do better than anyone else. So I'm thinking, there's loads of fighters. No sense in mucking about with that again. And we've already got one of the best luxury liners in the biz. What I figure is, the cargo running business is booming, and no one's quite built a personal craft like that to serve the working class folk. Nothing fancy, no frills. Just a simple, sturdy, inexpensive ship with cargo room up the wazoo and make it so easy my cousin's little moppet could fly it. Wait. Really? I was expecting we'd have to argue a bit more than that. <laughs> well, that's a relief. I hope you're being sincere. Because if I can convince them to go with mine, it'd save us all a lot of trouble in the end. I assume you mean the company and not the people. Because even if I didn't already think so, I'd tell you that both Walter and Issa are great. The company's still kind of young as far as Star Yards go, but... It seems to be going in the right direction, despite what it may look like. I've been doing this for a while at other star yards, and so far, we're avoiding a lot of the mistakes some of the older corps have made. I'd rather be in a ship that can defend itself. I don't want to be a target. <laughs> yeah, that's me, isn't it? Been here since the start of the company. Done engineering for going on 30 years total. But I keep telling them, it's senior, not lead engineer. I've got no interest in being lead. Too much management. Not enough tactile work. <laughs> and yet here I am. Resigned to my fate on the R&D team. Nope. Not really. I like to think I don't have the ego for it. I've got nothing to prove, and I don't rightly care to make my mark on the industry. But all I want to do is build the best damn starships I can. Not get bogged down with all the excess particulars. But upper management loves the work I do. And they wouldn't let me say no to this. I guess they needed someone to keep everyone's heads out of the clouds. So here I am. Later, mate. Um, hi. <laughs> Need something? Oh, no. Well, it's just... I'm a little new here, and everyone's got these big, flashy designs. And I'm supposed to come up with one too, but like, I don't know if it's as good or like, good at all, even. Thank you for saying that, but like, really? I don't know. <clears throat> Whatever. Here goes. So, I was thinking that we could really use a recreational craft in our fleet. But not like super luxurious like our Adonis pleasure yacht, something marketed more towards families. Something mom and dad could pack up and take the kids on vacation. <laughs> you probably think that's stupid, right? Oh. Really? Wow, I am... <laughs> Thank you. I'm really glad I told you about it. Well, if we end up making it, I swear I'll work up a hell of an ad campaign for it. So far I do. But, um, 
Just between you and me, I feel like I'm in a little over my head. I, I feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. But my bosses really seem to like my work, so... I don't know. I mean, I guess I'm doing something right. <sighs> I still feel weird pitching ideas to people who have been at this for so much longer than I have. It's... interesting. <laughs> I'm new, and I've never done anything like this before coming here. M marketing for ships, specifically, that is. There are so many things to think of for different demographics, like style, features, cost, and all that. And you also need to think about offensive and defensive capabilities, because space is dangerous, and people need to feel like the ship they're buying is safe. Yeah. I've only been here for a few months. I did a little marketing for Chunks before this, but it was really more of an internship. <laughs> Ships are, like, totally different than that. I applied for the job here on a whim because I thought it'd be fun. I never expected to be hired. Uh, see you later. You know, I have designed spacecraft for over ten years. So, you must have really impressed Walter for him to give you this project. Or maybe it's a bit of nepotism. Never mind that. <laughs> Perhaps he sees in you what he sees in me. Ah, yes. At least you may be more open to my ideas than my colleagues. Maybe this is a blessing in disguise. Imagine a luxury craft designed for the most discerning of tastes. Every feature designed for comfort and peace of mind. High-end performance. Precision engineering. A spacecraft for those who wish to be seen. This will be the most elite personal craft on the market. I'm glad you agree. Such an ostentatious luxury craft will be the envy of everyone in the settled systems. Two words. Conspicuous consumption. Are you familiar with this concept? <laughs> of course not. It's when someone buys something expensive. Mostly because it is expensive in an effort to show off their wealth to others. So, if we target what the wealthy elite and celebrities want, and sell the ship at a premium, they will buy it, and others will follow in order to be trendy. Imagine a star like Borealis is seen getting out of one of our luxury ships. Everyone is going to want one, so they too can feel like a celebrity. Because I am the lead designer on the project, it is literally my job to design it. It is frustrating because I keep getting pushback, and Jules had this idea that we will make a better product by designing it all together. Since everyone has equal say, it led us to a standstill. It was much easier before. Just because I do not like how corporate we have become, doesn't mean I don't like getting paid. Besides, with every successful ship I design, I believe I can influence the company to shift away from typical corporate bullshit and back to taking risks by pursuing art and innovation. Then again, here we are. Yeah, yeah, see you. This is going great! Just... fantastic! That data from your ship is going to be critical to our design process. Assuming you can handle the missions. Oh, yes, I actually do have a proposal. I wasn't really expecting you to give me feedback, but 
Why not, I guess? I'd like to see us branch out a bit more in the Starfighter market. Bounty hunting and mercenary work are both big these days, especially among the hard-blooded Free Stars. Wonderful! Thank you! I'm hoping when the time comes, I'll be able to convince the others that's what we should go with. We'll chat again soon, okay? Everything checks out. Landing initiated. to see you.
looking for the next mark. Always worth checking. Never know what you might find in their pockets.
came out of curiosity, but some of these... X, impressive. We've got people poring over the data you collected as we speak. Well, we're making progress now, I guess. A more focused design seems the proper approach. Ah, so you just did the one passenger mission. Well, seems like you handled it pretty well. Anyway, the data you collected will help us focus our ship design and cater towards certain pilots. Now we just need to solve our interpersonal issues so we can agree on a design. Easy, right? <laughs> You seem awfully confident for someone who doesn't know how long we've been dealing with this. I've tried everything I can think of besides some sort of hokey team building exercise. So, what do you think you can do differently? You know what? Why not? I'll try anything at this point. Stranger things have happened. And since you mentioned the idea, I think you should be the one to lead us in the guided meditation. Just feed us a steady stream of whatever positive affirmations you've got. I don't know if it will solve the design conflicts, but maybe it'll get everyone working with each other again. And I'll take what I can get, even if it leads to a more ridiculous design. So, you're sure about this? Okay, this should be interesting since I doubt any of us know what we're doing with this. Okay, everyone, listen up. Our new friend offered to lead us in a group meditation session as a sort of team-building exercise. Everyone take a deep breath, try to relax, and we'll get started momentarily. Listen to what he says and repeat his affirmations. By working as a team, we can conquer any challenge. Any challenge. Because Mr. Stroud is requiring us to listen to your friend, and I have every intention of doing just that, because I like my job and I don't want to get fired. My brilliance and creativity will help guide us to our goal. I trust my teammates and they trust me. I believe in myself, 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 Okay, I think that's enough of that. Thank you for leading us. I hope that was somewhat relaxing at least. Yeah, it was, kinda. It was fine. I'm good to go over here. You know what? I'll do whatever anyone wants, so long as I never have to go through something like that again. Okay, everyone. I think that's it. Let's get back to work. We're all super glad you're here, right, everyone? Well, we are. Based on the decisions you made, well, I'm not quite sure what kind of ship we're going to end up with, but it should be capable in a variety of situations. It sure will have a lot of stuff to it. This ship's going to be big, and it's going to have the best components available. I'm sure it'll be very capable of handling any situation thrown at it. This thing is going to be a beast, and I don't know how we're going to make it look halfway presentable. My only other concern comes down to the sticker price, and how we're going to actually sell such a monstrosity. But that's marketing's problem now. Poor Nev. Now that we've addressed all our issues, we can move forward, finalize the design, and get this into production pretty quickly. If you could do us a favor and let Walter know that we're back on track, I'm sure he'll be thrilled. Thanks for your help.
to ships that give Tayo a run for his money. Have you seen the specs on the Adonis? <laughs> Everything's so new here. Abershaw can help you if you need anything. It must have cost a fortune to build this place so fast. This place... is something else. We have a state-of-the-art R&D department here. Stroud Eklund may be new, but it has allowed us to learn from the others. Captain, do you require my assistance? I have something for you, Captain. Clamps released. what has happened while we have been away. Hmm. Sorry. You forget how much you take a place like the Lodge for granted. Until it's threatened. Good to hear. I figured as much. See, I just finished looking over the final design they sent over before you arrived. I've got to say, it's certainly interesting. They managed to cram just about everything they could into it. Honestly, I don't think it ever occurred to me to do something like that. I'll be honest with you. This is the most expensive ship we've ever made. But I'm confident we can set a price point to make it work. Now I'd be happy to make it my new personal ship. Additionally, I want you to have one of the first off the assembly line for all of your hard work. Feel free to pick it up at the Star Yard. Thanks again.
informal greeting, but I am dissatisfied with the results. 